Have you ever watched the first Fast and Furious movie? If so, do you know that a large part of the movie is about fast cars? Notice that all of these cars are usually small and lightweight, which normally makes the car move even faster. Take a look at the following video. The Cadillac Escalade V weighs 6,200 pounds and is on the left, while the Dodge Charger Hellcat weighs 4,595 pounds and is on the right. Which vehicle do you think will win? Most importantly, how does this tie into Newton's second law of motion? Stay tuned to see who wins in today's video. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome science content and material. In today's video, we will explore the claim that the amount of force needed to accelerate an object is proportional to its mass using Newton's second law of motion. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I will be able to provide evidence to support the claim that the amount of force needed to accelerate an object is proportional to its mass by using Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion is known by a famous equation, force equals mass times acceleration, where force is defined as a push or pull, mass is the amount of matter in an object, and acceleration is how fast an object or person speeds up or slows down. This law explains how force and mass affect acceleration. In today's video, we will break down each component of this famous equation and put all three back together to explain why each variable depends on one another and how a change in one will cause a change in the others as well. Let's begin with the concept of force. A force is defined as a push or a pull. In Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. This means that the larger the amount of force on an object, the larger the acceleration and change of motion of the object. It also means that the greater the mass of the object, the greater the force needed to achieve the same change in motion. It can also be stated that for any given object, a larger force causes a larger change in motion. Let's illustrate these concepts with the following example. Let's say you had to pull a cart with an 11.33 kilogram mass on it, which is 25 pounds. For most of us, we will be able to easily apply at least 26 pounds of pulling force to make the cart move and accelerate in the direction we are pulling it in. Remember, going back to Newton's first law of motion, we will have to apply an unequal amount of force of at least 26 pounds to make the cart move. Now let's say that there are three more masses of the same size added to the cart. This would now give us a total mass of approximately 45.35 kilograms which is now 100 pounds. Quick checks for understanding. Would you be able to apply the same amount of force to move the cart with 45.35 kilograms of mass as you did when the cart had 11.33 kilograms of mass? Explain why or why not. Also, would acceleration go up or down with the 45.35 kilogram mass? Explain why or why not for that scenario as well. Pause the video and take three minutes to answer. You got this. Now let's move on to our next concept, mass. Mass is the amount of matter an object contains. The more matter something has, the more it will weigh. For example, a horse has more matter in it than a mouse does, so its mass is heavier. Newton's second law of motion states that mass equals force divided by acceleration. The formula is basically saying that the more mass an object has, the more force is required to move it, which will lower the amount of acceleration it has. It can also be said, the less mass an object has, the less force is required to move it, which will increase the amount of acceleration it has. Let's use the following example to illustrate these concepts and follow for mass. The person at the top is pushing a blue car which has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. The person at the bottom is pushing a brown fan with a mass of 2,000 kilograms. The acceleration for both vehicles is the same. So what is the difference between the two vehicles? If you notice, the amount of force needed to accelerate or push the blue car is only 50 newtons. Uh, the amount of force needed to accelerate or push the brown fan is double with a force of 100 newtons. Why are the forces different? You guessed it. The more force an object has, then the more force needed to make the object accelerate or move. This evidence supports the claim that the amount of force needed to accelerate an object is proportional to its mass. As you can see from this illustration, 
more force is needed to move the fan because it has a larger mass. So, more force is needed to move more mass, less force is needed to move less mass. Now let's move on to our third concept, acceleration. We stated earlier that acceleration is how fast an object speeds up or slows down. The formula for acceleration in Newton's second law of motion is acceleration equals force divided by mass. As stated before, the formula is basically saying that the more mass an object has, the more force is required to move it, which will lower the amount of acceleration it has. It can also be said that the less mass an object has, the less force is required to move it, which will increase the amount of acceleration it has. Let's look at an example of this. The young man is pushing an empty cart in the picture on the left, and he is pushing a full cart in the picture on the right. Since the cart on the left is empty, he will be able to accelerate that cart faster than he would the cart on the right. But what if he wanted to push the cart on the right faster? What would he have to do? You're absolutely correct. He will have to apply more force to make it accelerate faster. Quick check for understanding. Why do smaller vehicles normally accelerate faster than larger vehicles? Pause the video and take two minutes to answer. We know you're ready. In summary, each variable of Newton's second law of motion formula, force equals mass times acceleration, affects one another. The greater the mass of the object, the greater the force needed to achieve the same change in motion. A larger force causes a larger change in motion. If you increase the force, you increase the acceleration. This is why force and acceleration have a direct relationship. As one goes up, the other goes up and vice versa. If you increase the mass, you decrease the acceleration. Mass and acceleration have an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. Changing one of the variables impacts the other two variables. But now back to the race. Let's see who wins. Hold on now. How did the Escalade V win if it outweighs the Charger Hellcat by almost 2,000 pounds? We thought that the more mass an object has, then it should take longer to accelerate, right? But we were missing one key variable. And that's our video for today. Now it's such a knowledge to see how proficient you are with providing evidence to support the claim that the amount of force needed to accelerate an object is proportional to its mass using Newton's second law of motion by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until you win. win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day. What are you smiling about? Dude, I almost had you. You almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. Ask any racer, any real racer. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning.